The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has deregistered 74 political parties. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu said 75 parties did not meet its criteria according to 2010 Electoral Act as amended, but deregistered 74. According to him, Nigeria now has less than 20 registered political parties fit to contest future elections. The Commission has determined that 16 political parties have fulfilled the requirements for existence based on Section 225A of the 1999 Constitution as amended. 75 political parties did not satisfy the requirements of the fourth alteration to the Constitution. However, one of the political parties, the Action People's Party, filed a suit in court and obtained an order restraining the Commission from deregistering it. Consequently, the party remains registered pending the determination of the case by the court. The new political party, Boot Party, BP, registered by court order after the 2019 general election will continue to exist. Accordingly, 74 political parties are hereby deregistered. With this development, Nigeria now has 18 registered political parties. Joining us live in the studio is the political analyst Lulu Elegme and also Ayo Ademiluyi, a legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this morning. Good morning. Pleasure now, to be here. Let, let's take your reaction first to the deregistration of 74 political parties. Lulu. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's a farce, to be honest. Um, we, just, we finished an election just a few months ago yes. where we had, um, I think, a record number of political parties um, contesting various seats across the country. Um, fast forward a few months later, um, we're told that 74 of those parties have been deregistered. And I can understand, again, I'm, I'm lost for, I, I'm confused as to how that's possible. Because if they're saying that these parties, and I, I can understand from the chairman's perspective, if you're saying that these parties didn't meet certain criteria, that's fine, that's fair enough. They should be deregistered. Mm -hmm. However, at what point did you realize that they didn't meet that criteria? Because if you're deregistering them, it means they were registered at some point. How did they get registered if they didn't meet that criteria? And they partook in the, in the last election. In the, in the yeah, last election. In the, in the first place. So yeah. these are the kind of, kinds of things that um, I can't understand how, how, this, how these things are allowed to happen in the first place. Now, imagine a scenario where um, you have people who've actually won elected positions. Ele um, won elections yeah. with one of these the um, registered problematic parties. parties. What happens to what happens then? What happens in that scenario? I don't know what happens okay. there. I don't that's know. The only way I can see it. make a clarification so that mm -hmm. we get the context clearly. Okay. What uh, INEC is considering to be the requirement based on that section 225A mm -hmm. is that a, at least that political party that is registered should have a uh, uh, stood in that election, or at least stood in that election, uh, win at least a councillorship or an answer assembly position. That was uh, the answer assembly seats in that election. So those parties that were cleared were, were, were you know, met that requirement. Having said that, I have fundamental disagreements uh, with the, not only with INEC as an institution, but also with that legal framework on political parties registration and regulation in our country. And it still boils down to the social political framework that, um, uh, upon which Nigeria itself is existing. It's an existence that is artificial. You know, we are, we, we are listening to the comment on security the other time. We have on our hands uh, a country that is just a contraption is artificial, it's not real. It was put up by uh, Anglo-American imperialists. People who want to just be extracting raw materials for them. And to date, as we are speaking to now, the map, even the map itself, was drawn up for a certain interest. And that's how it has been for the past 60 years that Nigeria has been in existence. Now, having said that, 
the kind of uh, the kind of democratic space we have to it's also structured to make sure that we have a situation where it reflects that uh, you know uh, lopsided arrangement that we have. And I'll give you a, a, a that is there for all to see. Now, when you say I must uh, for me to stand in an election, I must belong to a political party that has spread in about 20, so 23 states that has a federal capital territory. Am I running a federal parastata? A political party, first and foremost, is a demonstration of your rights to association. It's a demonstration of your right to vote or franchise, to vote and be voted for. If you want to have a genuine, multi-participatory uh, multi democratic space, we need to allow for independent candidacy. We need to allow for even community parties, parties, interest-based parties and all of that. If you want to remain within this constricted space, what is happening is that we are suppressing genuine agitations and aspirations. Eventually, we are sitting on nothing but a keg of gunpowder. Okay. Now, yeah. let's, let's take a look at the 2023 elections ahead of the 2023 elections. Very well, very well. What should we expect in terms of um, functional political parties? When you say functional, you mean? Mm. Like, because um, he, when he was speaking, he, right, he said, I mean, for, for some of those parties who were deregistered, as it mm. stands right now, they didn't win any seat, no, no any councillorship seat, mm. no, they didn't make it to the House. So what should we expect in terms of, you know, how functional the political party should be ahead of 2023? Yeah, but I think the, first of all, I'm not sure I agree completely with my friend here, okay. because the way you have, um, I think what you've described, it, it becomes chaotic. Nigeria is too big, I think, for us to have, because unless I'm misunderstanding what you're saying, what, what you're essentially saying is that if we can get to a space where, I think there's 774 local, local government areas yeah. in Nigeria. So if you have those sorts of community um, structures that you talk about, how, I think it becomes too, I think it becomes unmanageable um, it becomes too big, it becomes too chaotic. Now my issue, but then the, the problem then becomes, are we saying that um, we essentially should be running maybe a two-party state, APC, PDP? How, what does that do for actual democracy in the country? What does that do for grassroots movement in the country? And that's a fair question, and that's a fair question, I think. But I don't believe that the solution is um, people at that at the community level, at the local government level, even at the state level, to start to say, okay, we should have this. We should. I mean, we have 30. I think last count, 36 states. So by the time you have that, you have 774 local government areas. I think you have about 119,000 wards or something like that. I don't believe that INEC, as it's currently structured, has the capacity to manage that level of spread across the country. Okay. So going into 2023, I think INEC needs to be a bit more organized in terms of how the which political parties are allowed to participate in 2023 because otherwise you're just going to have this situation is just going to keep repeating itself over and over again because if you look at the spread of these 74 political parties most of them came up in the few months just before the elections, the elections and that doesn't make any sense so there should be there should be something in place that allows that restricts those sorts of things because I don't I, I, I don't know if it's monetary I don't know what the incentives are but where you have a political party springing up only a few months to the election and you know that these guys really have no chance of making any impact from mm -hmm. what you can see yes then why go through all the rigmarole and all the all the trouble of even allowing them to be registered in the first place? Let me react quickly to uh, what um, <coughs> my fellow commentator just said. Here. The entire Nigeria is possibly, in terms of land mass, is possibly short of just a state, United States of America. United States of America is quite bigger and wider. There, are, there is allowance for independent candidacy in the United States of America. Now, let's go back to the political history of Nigeria. Independent candidacies in itself, or community parties, they are not foreign to Nigeria. In fact, uh, Fumla Rasom Kuti, which is the mother of Fela, ran on an independent candidacy uh, ballot in Abel Kuta uh, Council, uh, upon which he fought the tax uh, whatever in, at that period. Now, let's fast forward to 2003. Something happened, Section 225A, that the Honorable uh, Chairman of the INEC is referring to, is a, is a new importation into our constitution. 
By virtue of two, by the 2002 elections, Chief Garin Fayemi, uh, of blessed memory, led a legal battle up to the Supreme Court and won a landmark decision in Aine, Kambara, Ebe, Musa, and others. Right, you need to wrap, wrap, wrap up your wrap up. Yes. What I'm trying to say is that we are, we are, we are taking back our democratic rights. Okay. This is not the democracy we fought for. And it is very clear. That is, and this INEC position is in violation of the, a valid and subsisting court order. There's a court order obtained by title parties against the registration. In short, we see this position, this latest pronouncement of INEC, as well as a continuation of that derogation of democratic rights. And we need to remove some of those anti-democratic provisions out of our constitution and move forward as a country. Okay. All right. Let, let me ask you, as we wrap up this, um, what do we expect to see in terms of political leadership, even as the argument of zoning and political representations continues? Well, I, I don't expect anything to change, Why? to be honest, because it's, I mean, this, these are conversations and arguments we've had since 1999. Okay. Not a lot has changed since then. And from everything I can see today, not a lot is going to change in the next four years. Um, you look at, okay, <coughs> excuse me. APC is the ruling party. So you're party. saying come 2023, we shouldn't look forward to getting new crops of political leaders as, I it, as it is? I don't think so. Not okay. from anything I can see. Because if you look at all the noise being made about who is going to run in 2023, for example, I mean, and these are, granted, these are rumors, there's no, there's no one there that we haven't been hearing their names over the last few years. There's, no, they, there's nobody I can see there that I'm thinking, okay, this person can come in, bring fresh ideas, yeah. bring um, um, new, a new a new um, a new wind to our democracy as a country it's still the same set of people so I don't maybe I don't know maybe I mean four years is still a long time maybe something will change in that time honestly okay. I'm not optimistic okay. that I, will, I will, quickly in just quickly, 30 seconds will, will, what, what, what is what is what is paramount for INEC at this point in time what is yes. very paramount for INEC at this point in time is the fact that we need to open up the democratic space the idea that reducing political parties, centrally political parties. In fact, uh, the question of regulating political parties, using logistics and resources, is key. Not, uh, you know, killing the, the democratic Yeah, but space. what's the point of having political parties that are not actively participating in, in the space, it's in the, the whole process? It's the upon which we are, we are running our political party system, okay. which we have argued earlier. We can, we can, we can decentralize it. Aya Demiluyi and also pop political analyst Lulu Elegbe, thank you for your contribution this it's morning. Now, six months after he was arrested in Kano, the suspected Taraba kidnapped kingpin Ahmed Subala, alias Wadume, has been charged with 16 counts of terrorism, murder, and kidnapping. From the court filings, the bedrock of the police case is a kidnapping in Takum on February 16, 2019, of a petrol dealer, Usman Gerba, by the Wadume gang. The police stated that the prosecution will rely on the testimonies of 29 witnesses to prove their case. DCP Abakiari, CSP Baba Kali, ASP Abdurrahman Mohamed, ASP Bawa James, and Inspector Abila Samuel and Elaju Joseph are the investigating police officers in this case. They will testify about their findings in the course of the investigation and will tender exhibits and documents, the police said in their court findings. The arrest of Bala, better known as Wadume, last year in Taraba followed the killing of three policemen and a civilian by soldiers at a checkpoint. Wadume then escaped until his rearrest in Kano, according to the document. The charges were fired by Sam Lu, Anthony Egu, and Peter Amadi of the legal prosecution section of the force headquarters in Abuja. Wadume is charged alongside Tijani Balarebe, an army captain, and 18 others. Now join us via telephone is a security expert, General Moma. Good morning to you, General. Good morning. And thank you for joining us. Yeah. All right. Wadume is back in the news again. And how good is our intelligence as a nation? Yeah, he's in the news again. And uh, it's very, very disturbing. General, are you there? Yeah, it's very disturbing. Okay. Oh, and and, uh, yes, go ahead, I've that, uh, said that uh, the Nigerian problem is not solved this meal. And uh, it's not going to be solved by firefighting. And this is why, of course, I say that it is long overdue to restructure Nigeria, particularly 
architecture, security architecture of Nigeria. It's overdue to structure Nigeria. And unless we do this, uh, cases like the case will continue to suffer. And uh, we just can't continue this way. The country is uh, heading towards the abyss. And it's essential that this issue of restructuring be taken seriously so that you can now revamp the security architecture of Nigeria and decentralize the country and be able to include the issue. So uh, that is my solution to the problem. All right, Jenna, we'll have to let you go. The network seems to be having a little bit of a hunch, and we'll come back to you later on in the day. Um, still in the studio with me this morning is Lulu Elegbe, a political analyst and also legal practitioner, Ayo Ademuluyi. Now, let me, let me, let me, take your, uh, let me have your reaction quickly to, mm. to, the, to the situation. What, what would you say is, is faulty with our intelligence gathering as, as a nation? Well, I, I think majorly is the fact that we have uh, a, a police, a, a police force that is detached from uh, the people themselves. What I mean by that is that, of course, we, we have a police force that is not democratically controlled by the people. And you know, we are talking about uh, all kinds of uh, regional security aspects the other time. It's also a reflection of what I've said about the fact that fundamentally there is something skewed about the structure, the geopolitical structure of this country. And that is why the future of Nigeria itself is in, is in, is in, is in, is in doubt. But cognitively speaking, it's the fact that for us to have genuine intelligence gathering, the, uh, the, demo, the decision making of and control of the police have to be under the democratic control of the people. It's the people that are themselves understand who are we in the community yeah. and can give information. Okay, but I'm, I'm concerned, um, Lulu, because this is coming six months after Wadume was allegedly um, assisted to escape on August 6, 2019 by soldiers attached to Battle of 93. Why, why is it taking this long? Why did it take this long? Yeah, unfortunately, um, the wheels of justice in Nigeria turned very, very, very slowly. That's the, <clears throat> that's, the unfo that's the reality of where we are. There's not a lot we can do about that, unfortunately. Um, I think the, the, my concern really is that the longer this takes, the more it recedes from people's memories in terms of, okay, this is what happened. And I hope that it's not a prelude to sweeping this under the rug because once this goes out of the public view, um, and then you, so all of a sudden you don't hear anything about it. You don't know if he's still in prison. You don't know if the case is still in court. You don't know if he's been let go. And I mean, these things are possible. We've seen, um, we've seen these things before. Yeah. So I hope that that's not where this is going to because the entire case itself is quite disturbing. Um, when someone involved in that level of criminality is, being, is clearly being aided by members of the security services, even to escape and civilians die in in some of those circumstances. It's, it's worrying, it's very, very disturbing. And when you think about the fact that this is one person and this is the one that we've heard about, about this yeah. is the one that we know about, you, I'm 99% I'm certain that there are many Wadumes out there being helped by different people within the security forces, which again is a, is a pretty, pretty disturbing turn of events for us. Now, you're a legal practitioner. Yeah. How would you react to this whole situation as it's unfolded? Well, he has been, uh, Wadume himself has been arraigned uh, alongside with other suspects. We would look forward to diligent prosecution by the police uh, in terms of uh, calling witnesses as are when due uh, as against the kind of trend we used to witness in our courts that uh, when now it's time for the prosecution to present his case, we will be looking to the, to the empty sky. So diligent prosecution by the police, we will be looking forward to that as we will continue to see the trial unfold. All right. right. Political analyst Lulu Elegbe, thank you very much for joining us on the news this morning. And also Ayo Ademuluyi, a legal practitioner, thank you very it's much. A pleasure. It's a pleasure.